Mothers know all about life's tricky transitions. Thankfully, Ollie helps you prioritize wellness through every age, life stage, or magnificent mood change. Need a multitasking multivitamin that keeps up with you? How about an essential prenatal for you and baby? Ollie's got you through it all. Life's tricky. Your wellness routine shouldn't be. Get what you need at ollie.com. It feels like you can get your credit scores anywhere these days. Random websites, card statements, budgeting apps, heck, even your dog might bark out a few numbers. It's true. Credit Karma isn't the only place you can find them. But we actually do more with your scores to help you find your next financial opportunity. Like a more rewarding credit card, a game plan that helps you pay down debt faster, or a personal loan to help you save more on interest payments each month. Cha-ching! The possibilities are kind of endless. Download Intuit Credit Karma today to get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I'm going to talk about this hack for how you could reimagine your response style if you struggle with being assertive. And uh, I call it, what would your most confident friend say to your partner in your place, right? Um, And this is going to cover why you would get into this situation as well as how this can help you reframe what you think of as possible versus impossible in your relationship. And you could use it for things that aren't your relationship as well, which I'll discuss too. Uh, First, I'll tell you to subscribe. Most recent subscriber episode is if you're scared to confront your partner about their dysfunctional parenting, you will end up on the wrong side of history. And I see this a lot with people that are scared to confront their partner. Really very similar. So if today's episode resonates with you, you should very much uh, take that as a sign to subscribe because this most recent one, as well as the 175 other subscriber uh, episodes, but especially the ones about people who struggle with self-esteem, self-confidence, and preoccupied attachment, those will all resonate with you. And that is a fair chunk because as you know, the avoidant people don't really listen to my podcast. Um, Okay, so I did a little video on this and I said, if you're struggling with how you should assert yourself or what you should say to your partner, figure, picture yourself as your most confident friend. And some people can't really picture anybody. So a lot of my clients have told me that they picture me. You know, um, the women picture me directly and the men think of what I would say to them to say, right? And so if you're working with a therapist or a coach, of course, you can think that as well. If not, then you could think what your most confident friend or maybe what your most confident sibling would say. So I'll I'll give you like an example, like the one from the little video was that you're sitting, uh, you're struggling to bring in the grocery bags all by yourself and your husband's sitting on the couch looking at you and looking at his phone, right? So then you might picture, what would my most confident girlfriend say? Like, I feel like I can't say anything. You know, and of course you should think, why do I feel like that? Well, probably because your mother was struggling doing everything while your father sat there. It's not too far um, of a leap to assume that that could be relevant as it is to most people who are my clients who struggle with such things. But anyway, so you often have a friend in your friend group or a girl from work or whatever, a woman from work, And you would say, well, this person might say, can you get up and help me, please? You know, in an aggrieved way (laughs) that would be likely to get them up or or a way that is frustrated, that it's directly expressing frustration that this was not done. You know, and it isn't what your sweetest friend would say and, you know, or the friend most like you, because remember, there's social homophily. So most of your friends will be like you. That means like goes to like. Um, but most people can picture, or your boss, or like literally anybody who's assertive. You may even think they're aggressive, you know? I mean, because compared to you, who struggles so much with saying anything to advocate for yourself, they are aggressive. I mean, if you put it on a spectrum, they're a lot more aggressive than you, but they may still just hit assertive. So obviously, don't, don't deal with don't use somebody who's been divorced three times, right, as your, as your model in this. But, you know, somebody who, the best case would be somebody assertive with a happy marriage. What can you picture this person saying, right? And then on the male side, so what about the most common thing, the lack of intimacy? What would your most 
assertive friend. And now for men, there's so many more openly assertive men in the world. Picture somebody from work, you know, this is what works a lot for guys. Picture somebody from work that you look up to, you know, that is uh, a very assertive guy who says his piece, you know, who does not struggle with self-advocacy. What would this person say in your situation? Well, you know what? They would probably say, why don't we have sex anymore? This isn't okay with me. I'm getting us into therapy. Point blank, right? Or, you know, more directly as little things happen, like, so let's say you reach out to your wife and she, she pulls away. So in that moment, you feel like you, quote, can't say anything because, quote, what are you going to say? These quotes are from people who struggle with this, right? And what would he say? He would say, why'd you pull away? What's the matter? You know, just straight out, just nothing mean. Like, I'm not saying to think about what would your biggest asshole friend say? Like, fuck you. Why aren't you touching me? No, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to take somebody who seems confident in their own skin, like they feel that they're a person of worth. Now, where else can you use this? I frequently say that the exact same people that struggle with advocating for themselves within within intimate relationships struggle within other relationships, such as at work, with friends, but mostly and most uh, upsettingly with children. So this is the people to whom I have addressed the podcast, Stop Letting Your Kids Treat You Like Garbage. Right. So what would your most confident friend say when her kid says, uh, ew, dinner's disgusting? What would your most confident friend say? They'd probably say something like, don't speak to me like that. That is very rude. If you don't like it, you can just sit there and eat the other things on your plate. And that's very rude. Don't speak to me that way. I mean, you know, you're, you're in charge of everything. You're in charge of the phone. I mean, this is a different topic, but <laughs> you have the full, full control of everything. It's like in Black Mirror now. If you have your kid's screen time set up, by the way, it's like you could press a button and they are just offline. So truly, like you are, it's like grounding, but it's so much easier, you know? But, that, that, and, but most people don't even have to get to that point. They haven't even tried speaking directly and assertively to their own kid. If that doesn't work, if your kid's like, I mean, I cannot even picture this in most situations, but if your kid's like, no, well, it is disgusting and I'm going to tell you it's disgusting, then you say, you've just lost yourself some screen time, you know, and we're going to have a different frame in this house where you're not allowed to speak to me like that and I shouldn't have let it get on, go this long, but when you speak to me like that, I take off an hour of screen time. But you have to, of course, put your money where your mouth is. You got to set up some screen time controls. I mean, this is uh, probably for a different podcast, but a lot of times you just don't have the infrastructure, you know, like it's truly like you don't have the infrastructure to make good on your promises. So that in and of itself is something that people don't understand, especially if they grew up in dysfunctional homes. They feel like they don't have the bandwidth to get things going in a way that they could potentially have some consequences. You know, they don't have the good things that the child looks forward to on one end and they don't have anything they could take away on the other end. But, you know, hopefully this piques your interest because I'm now sure I'm going to do a podcast about it. But anyway, what would your most confident friend say about your kid being a jerk? Well, I just told you. Um, And what would they say about your wife being rude and your husband, et cetera, et cetera? And so think about why you don't know this stuff innately. It's because you didn't see it at home, because your parents struggled with a lack of confidence themselves. And honestly, they probably, through no fault of their own, gave you a really shitty role model of how to be a confident adult and even a happy adult. I have a podcast on that, like, your kids deserve to see a happy parent. Do you know what that looks like? Probably not if you didn't see one. It's very hard to replicate what you never saw. And this is basic behavior training. When kids have assertive parents, they're basically taking an 18-year course in how to be assertive that they don't know that they're taking. And you can see this happen. Like, it's whenever you have little kids, like uh, my daughter is a camp counselor. She babysits a lot. My other daughter is a camp counselor. I mean, like, they... And they tell me about the little kids that they interact with. And it's always so funny when a little kid says something that you know is exactly coming from a parent, which is a lot of the time if you pay attention, because where else are they getting their stuff from, right? So so if, if a little kid says like, 
it, it's so easy to see in certain ways. So like if a little girl says, oh, um, I like to wear whatever the designer is, well, that's obviously coming from the mom. Like that's the designer that the mom likes to wear and it's from cute it comes out from a little girl's mouth she's like five years old so then it's like oh really you only wear this designer that's funny obviously you just heard like your mom say that at home and it's funny you know but everything that that little girl and all little girls and all little boys say is impacted by what they see growing up so it's a lot harder to see that when a kid says to another kid like ew, your lunch is gross, it's hard to see that that's something that they saw growing up, right? But it is just the same as the I only wear, you know, Gucci or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's the exact same thing. So at home, the dad says to the mom, what is this? When she puts out dinner in front of him, I'm not eating this. And then the kid learns to say, I'm no, to another person, that lunch is gross. You shouldn't eat that, right? Because they saw it. So basically, if you are struggling with assertive parenting, you got to picture yourself as a little kid. It's very useful to picture yourself at that same five year old age. What were you learning about being assertive at five years old from your parents? Probably nothing if you struggle with it now. Probably whoever your role model was in the home struggled a lot with assertiveness and getting their needs met. Sometimes you see one parent act aggressive and one parent act, like one is very domineering and one is very scared. And so now you're emulating the one who's scared because you don't want to be the one who's domineering. Probably you have a sibling who chose the one who's domineering subconsciously. This isn't a conscious thing, though sometimes it is. Sometimes boys will be like, I'm not going to be an asshole like my dad, or girls will be like, I'm not going to be an asshole like my mom. And, in, and then they don't realize that the only other option that they saw is the one who uh, struggled so much, right? Who struggled with assertiveness. That was the kinder one. But in those two options, neither option is good. The kinder one may be better, but they're still not where you need to be with actually having self-esteem and perceiving yourself as somebody worthy of good treatment and respect, et cetera, because neither of your parents were that. Either they were both very scared to self-advocate or one of them acted very domineering and aggressive and the other one was scared to self-advocate. You don't want to be the domineering one or you don't know how or that isn't a match with your innate personality. So then you turn into the other one, you know, and I have a podcast that literally the title is men with dysfunctional childhoods either turn into assholes or scaredy cats and those types don't understand each other. Something like that. If you type in the word asshole into the uh, Spotify search bar, not just the regular Spotify search bar. <laughs> I can't imagine how many asshole podcasts you would get then. But if you go to the Dr. Psych Mom show in the Spotify app, there is a little search bar just at the top for my podcast. And then you can look within that for any word, any term you want. Um, so basically, the TLDR here is this. We cannot go back in time and change how we grew up. However, we can be aware of it and see how it impacts us moving forward, which frequently, once you make those links with your past, it allows you to see that that behavior was learned, so therefore you could learn another behavior. And so what you're going to try to do to learn this new behavior is picture a healthy role model who is your most confident friend or me because we are in what we call a parasocial relationship where the podcast listener feels that they are friends with the podcaster, some a term that a friend taught me a long time ago when I started this podcast, which was actually only two years ago. Um, but anyway, so you could picture what I would say, which is actually helpful for a lot of people. All right, guys, uh, please do subscribe, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.